All right, everybody, welcome to another edition of TK's Two Cents every Tuesday, every Thursday, 12 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm coming at you live. I bring you a couple of tweets from the week, and then I give you a little context, a little insight on what's behind the tweet or maybe how to apply those ideas to your life. Today, I want to talk about how to stop letting people waste your time, which is another way of saying how to become a more generous person. Because when you stop letting other people waste your time, you become more available for the people that you feel called or compelled to serve. So one tweet at a time, let's go through it. Tweet number one, tweet number one. The people who are never willing to pay are usually the most expensive to manage. Charging for your services isn't just a matter of creating wealth. It's also a matter of protecting your health. If there's no cost for your time, there won't be respect for your time. If your life is empty of boundary lines, it will be filled with battle lines. You will find yourself filled with the energy of bitterness and resentment, and you will take that out on people in so many unhealthy ways. The best way to reduce the number of battle lines in your life is by increasing the number of boundary lines, because when you take care of you, you are the best at what you do. All right, so I wanna make the case that by charging for your time, you are actually being more generous, not less generous. I've done a lot of talking about the value of working for free, about how, especially when you are new in your career, and you lack a lot of experience, you lack a lot of skills, how important it is to be able to think about wealth in terms that are bigger than money. You've gotta be able to think about wealth in terms of having connections, having exposure, having people who know what you can do. And you have to take a cue from the brilliant marketers who understand the value of letting people sample what you have to offer, letting people preview your work. So when you're trying to get your foot in the door, and there's no one who values you enough to see you as being indispensable, doing a free gig here or there as a way of building your portfolio can be very valuable. But today I'm talking about the opposite end of this, the spectrum. The people who feel so guilty about charging for their time or their services or their products because, well, I wanna be generous. All right, two reasons why you're actually being generous by charging for your time. Reason number one, price is a differentiator. There's a difference between uh, a stated preference and revealed preference. Stated preference is what people say they value, what people say they appreciate. Revealed preference refers to what people actually choose once you introduce scarcity and sacrifice into the situation. People's stated preferences are often very different from their revealed preferences. If you say, hey, I'm coming out with a new book, you can go download it for free at this link. Well, lots of people will say, all right, that's cool. No cost to them, right? Just click the download button. I don't even need to read it. But the moment you say, hey, I'm coming out with a new book, it costs $10, guess what happens? All of the people who feel like they have a better use for that $10, are gonna run in the opposite direction. And the only people that are gonna come forward are the people who really care about what it is you're putting out there, the people that really resonate with it. I mean, can you imagine if a grocery store today, think about the grocery store in your neighborhood. If it said, hey, today, all soda is for free. Even people who don't drink soda are gonna rush into that grocery store and hoard it all up, right? Even if they don't even like soda, it's free. Everybody wants it when it's free. But the moment you assign a cost to it, people begin to think more critically, more judiciously, and they say, well, the $10 I was gonna spend on that, maybe there's something else that I prefer to do with that. And that's actually a good thing, especially when we apply it to time. Because if you allow yourself to be infinitely accessible, infinitely available to anyone who's asking for your time without any standards whatsoever, well, it's impossible for people to be considerate of your time. You don't even have a boundary that they need to respect. How could they possibly respect a boundary that's not even there? 
you sap your energy, you drain your life of creativity, and you're just giving yourself away. And guess what? When you're giving yourself away indiscriminately, the people who need you the most, the people that really need you so much that they'd actually be willing to make sacrifices to have your time, well, they don't really get to have you. It's just like the grocery store. They say, we're giving away soda for free. Everybody rushes in and buys the soda. The people who really actually like it, the people that are passionate about soda, if they don't get there first, they don't get to have any. It's the same with you and your time and your energy. There are people in this world who value you more than others. If you don't have a way to differentiate between the two, you're just going to end up giving away your time indiscriminately. And a lot of those people, they won't even value it. They'll run you dry. They'll demand all sorts of things from you. They'll, de they'll place demands on your time, demands on your energy, demand on your thoughts. And the people who really love you, the people who really need you, they're just kind of waiting to try to get to you. But TK, but TK, I, I'm worried about the people who really value me. They really care about what I have to offer, but because of unfortunate circumstances, well, they just can't afford me. Hmm. You wanna know the best way to be available to those people? The best way to be generous to those people is to be the kind of people who charges those that can afford to pay so that you're taken care of and you're doing well, and then being able to give from your excess as someone said, not your essence, right? The more you're taken care of, the more you can be generous to those people that can't afford you. You don't have to see those two things as being contradictory. Get rid of the guilt when it comes to charging people for your time, and that will empower you to be generous to the people that you really want to help. In fact, you're gonna be more generous to the people that can't afford you and who need you if you're not giving away your time in this undifferentiated manner. Because if you're just giving it away in an undifferentiated manner, a lot of the people who can't afford you and really need you, they still won't be able to have access to you because everybody else is beating them to it. Here's a second way that you can be generous by, uh, by choosing to charge for your time. You have a finite amount of energy. You have a finite ability to be able to, you know, just give yourself, right? So we're not even thinking about things in terms of making money. We're thinking about things in terms of sustainability. The more sustainable you are, the more generous that you can be. The better you are taken care of, the better off you can be. So, so we're not even talking about separating the wheat from the chaff. We're not even talking about making it easier for the people who really need you to have access to you. We're now talking about what you need to do in order to make sure that when you show up, you are showing up with your full and vitalized self. There are a lot of people who say, yes, 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 yes. They give themselves away for free. They, they respond positively to every request. But by the time they actually give you their time, their energy is sapped. They're, they're looking at you and pretending to listen to you, but their mind is on other things. Part of them is thinking, when am I gonna get something to eat? When am I gonna be able to you know, get some sleep? And this guilt that we have about taking care of ourselves based on the need to be generous towards others is all backwards. The best way to be generous towards others is to manage your energy and to only commit to doing things that are actually sustainable. And not just sustainable in the sense of I can show up, but sustainable in the sense of I can be there and I can be the quality version of myself. I can be non-resentful about being there. I can bring positive energy when I am there. Derek Silver says, if it's not a hell yes, it's a hell no. Start being like that with your time. Respect yourself and you'll find that other people will respect you more. But if you keep saying yes out of guilt, other people will keep demanding of you until there's no end. And they won't really appreciate you. That's just the way it works. Let's go to tweet number two. If you never develop the guts to say this isn't for you, you'll spend the rest of your life nervously jumping when other people tell you to jump. Usually when we have an idea, we are so hungry for validation, so hungry for constructive feedback that we just sort of, you know, care about what everyone thinks. Hey, mom, what do you think? Hey, cousin, what do you think? Hey, people on Twitter, everybody, what do you think? Give me your ideas. And we treat everybody's feedback as if it matters. But there are two categories of people in life. The first category, the people that you are trying to serve and satisfy. 
The second category, all the people on the planet. The people in this category of all the people on the planet, that's a really, really big category. The people in this category, the people that you want to serve or satisfy, that's a small niche category. Fewer people over here. But here's the problem. The people on the planet, all of them have an opinion about what you do, at least if you share it with them or if they're allowed to see it in some kind of way. And the overwhelming majority of those opinions don't matter at all. And if you preoccupy yourself with the opinions of all of those who matter, then you actually compromise the value that you create for the niche market that you're there to serve. Imagine for, for a moment that you've got a stand-up comedian on stage, right? Stand-up comedian cracks a joke, you know, 90% of the people in the theater get the joke and they start laughing. And then there's some guy in the front audience that's like, I don't get it. I don't find it funny. I don't get it. Imagine if the comedian stops the show to explain the joke to that guy. Okay. First of all, the guy still probably won't get the joke. Even if he does get it, getting the explanation is different from getting the joke. So the courtesy laugh that you get from, oh, I understand it. That's not the same as the actual visceral reaction that you get in real time. But here's the most important point. By taking the time to explain the joke to that one guy, you just took away the momentum from the people that got the joke. You just decreased the quality of the show for the people that got the joke. The people that matter are the people that get the joke. It's not the guy in the front row that's like, this is stupid. He's not funny. I don't get it. When you're thinking about what you're putting out there to the world, whether it's a service, a product, a set of ideas, the question to ask is, who is it not for? And if the answer is to everybody, if, if the answer is everybody, that's not good enough. You got to boil it down. Who is it not for? Whose opinion will I not care about? It's just like when you go into a casino, you know, they say you should have your number beforehand. What's my cutoff point? I don't want to go into the casino and start feeling lucky and then start acting as if, you know, like I'm just going to keep going until the feeling of luck goes away, right? Like, nope, you say my cutoff point is this. I'm only going to spend this much money and no matter how I feel, I'm stopping at that point, right? We'll do the same thing for feedback. What's your cutoff point? Whose feedback will you not care about? People think about who's it for, but think about who's it not for. Every opinion doesn't matter. Just the other day, I, 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 I put up some kind of post where the message was something along the lines of how you cannot learn against your own will. People can take your body and force you to sit in a classroom and they can force you to like be quiet and be obedient, but no one can force you to learn against your own will. All personal and professional growth is grounded in voluntary choice. And, and um, Fee put up the tweet and was like, who agrees with this? And, and, and there was one person that was like, you know, um, this is so obvious that it don't even need to be said. You know, and then the next person was like, this is so obviously wrong. I can't believe who said, I can't believe he said it, right? Two completely opposite opinions. Now, you might be wondering, oh man, does that make me feel bad? Am I going to respond to those comments? Do I need to explain? No, not at all, because it's not for them. If I put out an idea on how to make the most of your life, I am not writing or creating for people who say, I will never listen to anything if I have already heard it before. It's, it's not for that person. And also it's not for the person that says, well, I disagree and I'm gonna be mad at you. For... It's not for that person. You know, it's like if I write an article on how to fix a flat tire, it's not for the person that already knows how to fix the flat tire. It's not for that person. Who's it for, who's it not for? Get straight with yourself on that because once you get straight with yourself on that, you will stop letting other people waste your time because you will be valuing the feedback. You will be prioritizing the feedback of people that are actually interested in enrolling in what it is that you do. So for tweet number one, assign a cost to your time. Don't be free all the time. Make sure that when you give yourself away for free, you are doing it from a place of already having taken care of yourself. You are giving from your excess, not your essence. And when it comes to listening to feedback, don't let everyone convince you that their opinion is important. Focus on who you're here to serve, who you're here to satisfy, and prioritize what they have to say.
and work hard to get it right. All right. That's it, y'all. Peace.